So let's look at uh, the relationship uh, between technology and the production of sound. Uh, let's start with the most basic, so we'll talk about vocal production. To utter a sound, the human body goes through a series of processes. It's actually rather complex how many muscles are involved in that process. So uh, the body receives various signals from the nervous system, the diaphragmatic muscles contract, and the diaphragm moves downward. And uh, so it creates a vacuum in the lungs and air rushes in. Other muscles intervene, intercostal muscles, abdominal muscles, the thoracic muscle uh, below the sternum, etc. Air flows up to the larynx where the vocal folds vibrate and create a sound current. And then the sound uh, goes up and resonates in the facial cavities and uh, finally a melody comes out. So let's now go beyond the human body and look at how we can create sounds through musical instruments. We have roughly a couple of basic types of instruments. We have string instruments, we have wind instruments, and we have percussion instruments. In the case of a violin and most string instruments, you have strings, obviously, um, that are attached to some kind of a resonating body. So the sound, the vibration is created on the string itself and in the case of the violin that vibration is carried through the bridge and then that bridge is also connected to uh, what we call a sound post and the sound post takes that energy to the back of the violin and in the end both big membranes of the resonating box uh, are moving together um, from that energy that's created by the strings vibrating and uh, we either excite those strings with a bow that creates friction and makes them uh, vibrate sort of slowly, or we pluck them like a guitar. In the case of a drum, uh, they have a, a large membrane that is struck, and then that membrane is going to react to that strike and uh, move in mysterious ways, as you can see from the diagrams, in the image and then uh, that's going to create uh, pressure inside the box that's going to bound sort of back and forth and then that energy sort of is released from the drum and uh, pushes uh, the air molecules uh, rather violently so that's why we hear and then that sort of very vertical impulse of a, of a snare. Bells are a little bit different they're also considered uh, percussion instruments um, but they're called struck ideophones, uh, meaning that uh, they don't have a specific element that vibrates, but the whole instrument itself is carrying the vibration. Um, we have many different sorts of bells, like church bells, but even cymbals could be considered bells, or gongs, or even smaller bells like the Tibetan bells. The harp is very similar in a sense, to a uh, violin, only that uh, with violins, uh, it's the bow that creates the this very smooth sound. Uh, in the case of a harp, is almost rather more uh, of a percussive instrument, in a sense. Uh, it's only plucked. Um, but then you have so many strings. Uh, in fact, the Western harp uh, has the full range of, a, of an orchestra. And as you can see here, we have uh, two different types of harps. The harp is one of the most ancient instruments and it appears in a lot of different cultures. And uh, you see that it also has a resonating box and the strings are usually sort of hanging down. Um, there's also a neck that uh, or uh, kind of like a, a thick pole that uh, holds the whole structure together. The same happens with the uh, kora, which is a, a gorgeous instrument uh, from Africa. Um, it's a similar principle. Before we delve deeper into technology and how it's used, uh, or what the relationship is with music, uh, we need to look at some basic concepts about how we transmit sound. How does sound travel? First, we have to understand what sound is and what are its properties. Let's uh, look at Webster's definition. Uh, well, we have three definitions. First, we think of sound as a tone uh, or an auditory impression. We also think of sound as a sensation we perceive 
uh, and it's through the sense of hearing. But of course, we if you go to a loud concert, you're going to feel it uh, in your chest, or if you go to a club, you might even feel it, uh, you know, from beneath, you know, in the uh, rumbling uh, floors. Most importantly, sound is thought of as a mechanical radiant energy. So it's an energy that spreads around. And uh, in order for that energy to be spread, it needs some kind of medium. Typically for sound is air, but even water transmits sound. Um, so you can see, you actually can see it, uh, the, the typical example of throwing a stone on a, on a lake or a pool of water, and you see the waves that uh, extend. It's the same principle with a uh, sound whether it's through water or metal, or it, it doesn't matter, the medium. It, we really think of it as a vibration. So how does it work for sound to exist? There has to be a vibration. There has to be something that is moving, which is happening all the time, all around us. We wake up and we get out of bed and we're uh, shifting uh, molecules in the air. And uh, we do that more precisely when we grab a guitar or a violin or a drum or whatever it is. Um, but basically when uh, that happens, say we bang on a chair or a table, um, that movement gets reflected back into the environment and that energy uh, pushes the air molecules and the air molecules push other air molecules. And uh, so there's a, a, a sequence or a chain of events that occurs then. Just like when we drop a rock on a lake, right? And we drop the stone or a rock and uh, that rock takes some space in the lake now and it sort of is moving the, um, the water around, the nearest molecules of the water, and uh, they in turn take some other space and move other uh, molecules and then those molecules bounce back and uh, so that's the concept of a wave uh, arises. So there's a wave or a chain of movement that in the case of the uh, striking on the table, it's the air molecules that reach our ears and then once uh, that uh, those air molecules that have been moving move in turn the membranes that are our eardrums then those are responsible for converting that energy into an electrical energy an electrical signal that arrives at our brains and then our brains interpret that information as sound as that sensation When an object vibrates, it pushes the surrounding air molecules into one another, starting a chain reaction of collisions through the air. These collisions travel in waves. When they strike your eardrum, it vibrates. This vibration is converted into electrical signals that your brain recognizes as sound. Throughout our history, musicians and music lovers alike have been preoccupied with how best to transmit carefully crafted sound, whether it's music or theater. So we have uh, constructed open theaters, acoustic shells, concert halls, all following the study of acoustics, which is the study of how sound uh, propagates and uh, in order to make it uh, the communication as efficient as possible. Let's look at a few images um, just to get an idea of how we have used technology uh, in order to aid the transmission of sound, um, starting with the Greek theater, um, this concept of uh, steps that are surrounding a stage. Uh, but in open air. Besides the open theaters, we also have acoustic shells that project the sound from the stage, um, as opposed to the steps creating some kind of uh, enclosed uh, surrounding, um, different kinds. This is uh, some kind of mix between the two. Here, uh, an open theater 
but uh, with a ceiling that is also used to project the sound in specific ways. Here's that same theater um, looked from uh, not the side, but from, from the front. And then we move on to enclosed theaters. What you're seeing now is the Walt Disney Theater in LA. That's the inside of the Walt Disney Theater. It's uh, rather round and it has a, a stage in the center that's been a, quite a, a more modern take on this kind of uh, setup. But you'll see it uh, throughout. Um, you can see it also here in the Berlin Philharmonic and also in the uh, Paris Philharmonic. 